So while we're still laboring here on all of our ASR 33s, I'm getting pretty close, but not quite. Uh, Marcel, a local friend and collector, came to show what he has bought at the auction. Hi, hi Marcel. Hi Mark. <laughs> and uh, no, Marcel has been kind enough to loan of stuff when uh, he has it and we need it. Um, but no, he went on a little bit more of a rampage than I did go. If you follow the channel, you know that last October there was an auction at which an Apollo guidance computer was offered. We had to pass on that, but I got some nice consolation prices, a Soyuz space clock and a very beautiful Palisite meteorite. Now it's time for Marcel to do a show and tell on what he got from the same auction. Have this little box. I'm not quite sure what's in here, so we'll see this first. Oh, you you, have, you haven't unboxed it entirely this yet. One I haven't touched yet. Those I looked at a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, these are some charts. Oh, you got the descent charts. Apollo 14. It's coming Duty up. Duty cycle yeah. flight data. What the heck is that? Okay, we'll know in a minute. So, what 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 is it? Well, from what I can read here, that's the only thing well, I can see, <laughs> that's we knew about is it. that there was a telemetry tape from the Apollo 14 mission that was reduced by Grumman Aerospace and Bethpage, and they put it on these charts and then annotated it to point out that all of the times where different events happened, when they were reprogramming around the abort button that had a bad solder ball yeah. and so it was falsely trying to abort the the limb oh, we, we, and fire the engines yeah, and, and so right. they um, Don Isles came up with a procedure of commands to issue that would bypass the functionality of that button so they could safely land on the moon. Apollo 14th in-flight reprogramming is probably one of the most famous hacks in history. Here's a picture of the team that did it, most famously Don Isles on the far right. And we were fortunate enough to meet all of them alive and kicking while we were demonstrating our AGC at MIT last year. They all posed trying to reenact the famous photo. Don Isles famously wrote the lunar landing code. He handed us some of his items so we could recover the historical programs while we were at MIT. Although he donated a lot of his items, some of the most interesting items on the auction came from the remains of his collection. This came out of Don Isles collection. Ah, oh, it's, it's uh, Don Isles? Yep. Yep. Well, a lot of the stuff in that auction was... Yep. He was nice enough to release this stuff to the world, so... Yeah, well, that's the... Yeah, that's the... The AGC was his, too. Uh -huh. He didn't tell us, huh? No. <laughs> this whole time he had another one. <laughs> so this is... So this Apollo 14 duty cycle flight data. Duty cycle? Duty cycle as in the power consumption? Okay, so... Alright, I'm filming from the wrong direction, let me come around. <laughs> Exit, verb 83, select P63, program 63, ignition algorithm. Then here's verb 6, now 61. So we get a bit disorganized in the excitement of discovery. Let me pause for a second. Verb 83 was the rendezvous parameter display, which they were checking just before starting to land. You know, in case something goes wrong and they need to go back to the command module. Select P63 is the program that starts the landing burn, so they are just about to land. Verb 6, noun 61, is displaying the result of the burn parameter calculation, burn duration and time to ignition. Verb 50, noun 18. Right. Ver 15 on 18 is going to auto maneuver the spacecraft to the proper burn orientation. So this is uh, this CDU zero. This is verb 14 on 20, which was a normal workaround to force a reset of the coupling data unit to zero. And now 62, this is where the overwrite mod reg, which is part of his bypass. So now we get into the meat of things. This mod reg marks the beginning of the hack where they fooled the AGC into thinking it has already aborted just before ignition, so it would not try to abort once more from the faulty switch. And then the disky blanks, starts average G. Ignition. Oh, duty cycle, is, is that the load of the computer? That's, that's oh, the computer that's load, it. Yes. that's it. That is the... Oh, uh, oh, nice, yes, that's what that duty cycle has to mean. 
Aha, uh -huh, that's my light bulb moment. I realize we are looking at a chart of the utilization factor of the AGC. See, there is a green computer activity light that lights up during the computation time used in each two second calculation cycle. The more the green light is lit, the closer to 100% computer load they are. That's what they are plotting here. They sure don't want to go any close to 100% for too long, because that's what's caused the 1202 error in Apollo 11. And so they're correlating everything to each command that was Right, issued. right, right, right. And the computer goes and does more stuff, and it has less free time for the idle command. Right. And it knows how much it's working, how, how fully loaded it is. There, there you go. Broom. We are landing Averagerie, Averagerie, that's the ignition of P63. Mm -hmm. Reset. And here's where they reset, let abort. So they set it up so it wouldn't abort, then they put it back oh, on. Oh, that's, right. um, right. that's the special workaround for Apollo 14. Exactly. Rewrite mode reg. Mm -hmm. Told you, hack of the century, guys. They just had ignition and they have a few seconds to frantically input cryptic octal commands to modify the essential computer status flags so they can land without crashing. That's the meaning of the zoom flag, let abort and mod reg flag marks. Now 69, that's when they monitor the descent. Disky freezes. Oh, they have a freeze on the disky? Apparently. Verb 6992, I can't remember what that one is. 1692 is monitoring the percentage of thrust, altitude rate, and altitude. I have not seen this used in Apple 11, so a new procedure for 14, I guess. Call well, Mike Stewart. Yeah, well, we can do it. I have it running on the back. Um, and this is Apollo 14 flight data reduced from MSCT. Best page is, of course, the yeah, Grumman, Grumman Aerospace, Grumman the guy that made the lamp. And then when 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 they go in P sixty four P sixty four they are landing something recovery what is this freeze T R T recovery hmm I wonder if they had a restart mm, don't know but P sixty four here we go P sixty four that's pitch over when they finally see the surface so that's getting pretty close to landing. And that's, so that's, after the braking is done, that's the, uh, how they call that phase? Um, I can't remember. And that's, that's P66, that's when they take it manually and land. S that's dump loop server duration, I guess. Two seconds, 1.9 seconds, 1.6 seconds. So okay. one of these is dummy loops and one of them is server something. So we got it right. This is the percentage used up of each two second calculation cycle. 0.1 seconds. So it's when it's used at 10. Oh, exactly. So it's how much, how, how, how high is the usage? Right. So it's supposed to go up. To, yeah, it's still pretty close to 100%. It has 10% some peaks. And this I don't understand. It looks like it, it goes into a 1202 over there. There are several places where yeah. it spiked, but not enough. Okay, then, and then we're down here, and this is where you're on the moon, right? Uh, P66, they should be on the moon right here. Right. right, and now this is the commands you issue afterwards, right? To say, okay, we're on the P moon. P P68, so that's the uh, post, -landing. post landing stuff. I can't remember. And they're setting things up to synchronize the abort computer so they can get back to the command module if they need it. Yes, so that's the preparation for emergency exit. Mm -hmm. And then the Select poo, the idle. stay on the moon, select P00, and poof, no more activity in the computer, and they're good to stay on the moon. So that's a great one right there. I don't know what the others are, but that's wonderful. Orbit monitor chart. So you've got more than just the duty cycle here. Whoa! Be careful, you have two sh rolls. There's yeah, four. There's one, four. One rolling. Sheet four or four. Oh, it so shows you how they were put together. See, sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. Okay, and then oh, that, that's basically their chart that they had to figure out where they were, visual. Pretty cool, and with great photo, you can see how they piece the photographs together. Herschel's greater. Yeah, and that's that's the path of the LEM, I guess. LM orbit. LEM orbit chart. 
Is Apollo? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, Apollo 14. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a drawing. So they wanted to show dark light mm. and the path. That's a hand drawing. It's hand painted. What's this? Look well, ground track of selected revolution. So here's revolution 20, here's revolution 34. Is so they didn't. You also have 18 and 1. Yes. This is but so precise, they knew exactly where they were going to go. There's the landing site. There. See, Frau Morrow. Landing site. I see it. Right there. That's where you're supposed to go. Oop. And, and here's sunrise, so very early, so they get those long shadows. <coughs> yeah, right. The, so they were coming from. No, there's the arrow they were going. In that direction, and landing in Framo. Cool. So Marcel, here's a piece de resistance here. So we have a description. A Block Two Disky EL display. This particular one was from a pre-flight unit. It's got a little cracked glass there, but hopefully Carl can get this thing cranking even with that. So this is of course the real version of the disky electroluminescent panel that Ben Krasno had so magnificently reproduced for us. Carl's task will be to light up that puppy and see if it still works. So that's a real electroluminescent thing. Yep, it should light up with the uh, right. proper wavelength. And, and it's got those same pins that the AGC had. So right, yeah, and we have those made by Samtech and then yeah. we'll lend it to the disky master. Carl's going to right. make it all work. Make a PCB and interface for right. it. Or and just for them. comparison, this was another spare that was sitting around for a very long time with its original mm -hmm. acceptance documents. So, so we have two of them. Well, you have two of them. <laughs> And once we get that one working, we can go back and try to get the same oh, on that one. <coughs> try to get this one working. And this is so. Uh, this one this is. This was this was flight ready and oh, this qualified and yeah, right, right, right. Well, it looks like you have to redo a V two of your disky. <laughs> looks like Carl's disky, which was at first a hairy monster, then a nice LED lookalike, then sprouted Ben's EL's reproduction might finally get an upgrade to the real thing. And it's got the same type of uh, connector under this little rubber right. protector here. But this, this one is just was in its original. Mm -hmm. And it's got the top cover thing that it's just done there. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And then it's got this great little thing here. So if something goes wrong with it, you're supposed to slap this on there. Return it to Unserviceable item. Don't try to repair it or even toy with it, Carl. Mm -hmm. Just return it to NASA. All right. Mm -hmm. See, see again what what this is. Well, it's appears to clearly be aerospace and Apollo related. Knowing where the fellow I got it from, uh, some Velcro here that would have held it in place somewhere, and it's got this very thick cloth, luminized cloth on this side which would have been on the most interior side. Mm -hmm. And then you have all these layers of... Captain wrapping. Captain and aluminum in the center. And gold. Yeah. This is super light. Weighs nothing. Mm -hmm. Can you flip it over? There you go, gold. That's what you want to see. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I would expect on the exterior of the lamb. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it wasn't one sheet, it was a whole bunch of layers. Yeah. Right, so that's something you can only have in vacuum, right? It's just too fragile to, to, to put through the asset. So is that 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 must be lamb shielding. This there was not uh, none of that on the CSM, right? You couldn't. No. Okay, well, what what are the beds here? How 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 thick do you think that is? Uh one mil. So I measured Basically the minimum resolution of the thing, which is 0 0.005, there you go. Yeah. So it's, we know it's less than half a mil. These feel even thinner. This is almost like you could feel your fingerprints through here. Yeah. The 
aluminum. Oh yeah, there's a there's an even thinner layer here. The thinner layer actually measured zero beyond the resolution of my calipers. And it looks like we measured it right. This appears to be a thermal blanket with the thicker layers being 0.5 mils, 13 microns, and the thinner ones 0.15 mils, 4 microns. That is indeed very, very thin. Wow, <laughs> it's made out of nothing. So back to the AGC, we have some block ones. Actually, I've never seen a block one. I do. We saw a, me a part of a memory module when we were trying to uh, repair a memory module. Mm. They, they showed us one at the uh, CHM. They had one in the archive. Mm. And, and then we were like, oh, darn, it's <laughs> block one. We can't plug it in. Mm -hmm. But here you go. So block one AGC. And as I describe here, these are the first mass-produced IC chips. So in a way, this is the dawn of the IC in Silicon Valley. Yeah, well, this is we are still living on that, you know, the, on the legacy of that program in the US, right? That's yeah. why we are ahead, and then that's why Intel's ahead, right? Because yeah. the guys at Intel were a fair child. Can you, can you take it out of the package? Sure. Let's touch the edges here, but uh -huh. this is in beautiful shape. Yeah, A1, A16, they didn't change it for block two. Serial number four. Actually, they did, because these are one input nor gates. Well, there's single gate per chip. Right. To all three input. Right. And then in block two, they went to the right. dual Dubo three they input Double the density. There is yeah. the first step of Moore's law between no uh, between block one and block two, basically. Yeah, doubling in capacity right there. Well, that looks pretty good. So that is one of these. Space Shuttle Computer, AP101S. This is the upgrade where they finally got solid state memory. So this is the uh, successor of the AGC, basically, flying well, the shuttle. It's the no, grand the descendant AGC. thereof. Or the LVDC, LVDC. well, but same function as the AGC, the, 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 the flight computer. Navigation, yes. Uh, right. this is but a derived from the IBM. Four pi. Predecessor. So this is a pre-production model, but it uh, should all be based on the same IBM 360 kind of architecture. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, Pick it up. There you go. Yeah, what's that one? All right. Ooh, looks just oh, like a <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like a computer. Oh, that's that's a nice plate. It's in there. Yeah, so this works the same way. You got the aluminum through the board. You, it clamps onto, so it conducts okay. through the case. So the okay. case is sealed itself. You know. Yeah, it's an it's an aluminum aluminum core yeah. board. Yeah. Not all of them. Some are only on the side. No, that's a core. Yeah, that's core core core. This is a side only. Yeah. So it depends on how much participation you have. Lots of little ICs. We were just having fun with door screws. Yep, that's they, what you need, right? They are there. Swiss things. Hollow shaft nut driver set. That's not the one I have. Of course, it is. Mm -hmm. I have it. And it says, yep, yeah, 91. So that's Circular more aerosol. recent. Your space shuttle thrust and brake controller. Oh yeah, so this is how you control the space shuttle, the thrust, so you control the big engines yep. with that thing? Yeah, and then there's like the, the triple redundant flight system, ah. so you get three copies of your signals going out. Just, just, just for the big handle. And then okay, the handle. Go to full thrust. So there's a little mark here, so that may be the default setting, uh -huh. normal nominal setting. And if you want to ask the computer to take over manual control, mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to kind of signal that you want it, and then match up your thrust on the indicators, mm -hmm. and then it'll say, okay, now you, you, you can do hit it. the button and <laughs> take over and full throttle, or a lot. Okay, hold, awesome. it, hold it for me, hold the box. Oh yeah, that has some gravitas to it. A lot of resistance. Yeah, it's super damped, right? You cannot do any quick movement mm -hmm. or unless you... And that button, man, you really want to have, you can't press it by accident. It's super hard. 
And then during landing, you can use this to take over manual control of the air braking. Yay, excellent. Go fast, go slow. All right. I think. Well, this is this is real stuff. Very nice, soft leather. Wow. Oh, that's best Russian leather. <laughs> wow, it is. Wow, this is super soft. Okay, Marcel, are you going to put it on? No, I'm not going to put it on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> come on. But yeah, it does have the, the dual mics on there. Oh yeah, this is this is for serious uh, space work here. Let's see what kind of connectors they use. What's going on there? This is definitely inside a space suit. Yeah, can you, op can you op open it up? Yes, it looks in superb shape. Mm -hmm. And the leather is super extra supple. Nice suede. I don't know what animal that came from. <laughs> it's a very furry Russian thing. Lab or something. Yeah. A very soft skinned Russian thing. Mm -hmm. This leather is really nice too. Yeah. Yep. And I know this, the thing with good leather or good felt it doesn't age. It's not like plastic or rubber. And Marcel brought even more things. An International Space Station microphone prototype. A Rocketdyne Gemini thruster. He even has a whole test panel section of space shuttle tiles that's too big to bring in. But this video is getting a tad long and we'd like to go back to making things work rather than simply admiring them. So congrats Marcel and thanks for sharing your collection with us.